In this video, a painting by Magnus Colcord, made in 1964, is worth more than $60,000. Are you curious to see the reaction later on in this video? Stay tuned. This man and his wife stumbled upon a book and paper show winning a $50 gift certificate in a raffle. We spotted these two photographs. We decided on the larger one because we had just bought a new house, needed some art to put on the wall. This photo reminded him of his father, who used to run a cattle farm with his grandparents, so he brought it. I always remember my father having a portrait of the prize bull on his desk, ah. so I had that connection. Little did they know that these would soon become treasures of substantial value. Photographs were captured by the elusive John Stryker. Stryker started doing rodeo photography after he moved to Fort Worth, Texas. The legend is that he had a, a camera strapped to his boot and he would lay down in the arena and take the pictures so the bull looked like it was actually flying. After the rodeo, he would post his photographs and sell it to the cowboys. He's highly collectible. There's just not a huge amount of them out there that are in decent condition because they were owned by cowboys and nailed up to their walls. The photograph is valued at $1,500. The circus-like theatrics photograph is valued at $500. While this pair of unusual bull pictures is estimated at $1,500. Well, they just hang on our walls. We enjoy them no matter what, but no idea they were worth that much. In 2001, a discovery unfolded for the guest as they delved into her late mother's belongings, stumbling upon a mysterious box in her safety deposit box. I would think he probably bought that box. I can't imagine her buying a box like that. This beautifully crafted box was made by none other than Gerald Binney. He is considered one of the most important uh -huh. celebrated craftsmen of the 20th century in England. It unraveled the tale of Binney's innovation, making the box's significant deepen. And I think to people who collect postmodern pieces, he is considered very important, and very important to the history of British design in general. The box is actually a silver box adorned with an 18-karat gold knob that was made in England. The decorative scheme on this is actually became known within the trade as the Benny Bark sort of technique or Benny Bark finish. Hallmarked in 1972, the same box had recently fetched a considerable sum at an auction in London. The magnificent box has an estimated value of five to seven thousand dollars. My mother would be turning in her grave with this. <laughs> These candlesticks in a graceful bowl found their place in the heart of the guest narrative, originating from the hollow dining room of their grandmother. Her grandmother worked for a family in Westchester County for a long time. They moved west, they left a lot of valuables, so they became part of our family. So that was a nice way for us to get things that I don't think our family could have afforded otherwise. These golden iridescence glass candlesticks were a handiwork of Tiffany Studios, founded by Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Both candlesticks are signed. They can be used two ways. Sometimes they're used as candlesticks, mm -hmm. sometimes they're used as bases to candle lamps. On the other hand, this golden iridescence glass bowl, called Astria, was made by the company Letts. The appraiser connected the dots about how these items ended up in the guest grandmother's possession. Well, what I do think is it was a really great gift. Oh, okay. For being a really great employee. Yes. <laughs> the candlestick's estimated value is eight hundred to one thousand dollars, while the Astria is valued at one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. How exciting! I had no idea. <laughs> This man is a collector of vintage automobiles and automobilia. He acquired 14 posters crafted by the skilled hands of August Bueller for the 1933 Chicago's World's Fair. On the other hand, this mobile gas poster was a cherished gift from a neighbor's family. And he was in the graphic arts department. They made posters for the 39 New York World's Fair, and this was made, and I was told it's the only poster ever made. While this third poster was bought at an antique car show in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the appraiser unveiled the true origin of these posters. This shell poster actually came from 1936 rather than 1933 after the Chicago World's Fair. 
all the research I found showed that it came from 1936, so a few years after the fair, when Bueller did a whole series with this title, The World Experience in Every Gallon. They tend so, to sell in the $400 to $600 range. Wonderful. This one was from the 1939 San Francisco World's Fair poster and was part of a widespread advertising campaign. Mm -hmm. And all of the posters show different aspects of the world. Right. And so it's a great series. Some of them have come up for auction in the past. The poster unfolded with a masterpiece from the turn of the century by Abel Trouch. Its value is the highest of all of them, and at auction I'd estimate it between $1,500 and $2,000. Very interesting. The overall value of this collection was $2,300 to $3,000. Live and learn. Live and learn. Thank you very, very You're much. Welcome. I really appreciate it. It's a, pl it's a pleasure. I'm, hap I'm happy to heal the sick. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll, never, I'll never be cured. <laughs> <laughs> After this guest house tragically burned down, friends threw a housewarming party for their newly built home. Among the thoughtful gifts, she received a mysterious three-piece object. So we bolted them together in the back and hung it as a mirror. It turns out that this item was made for a table called a plateau. It was used for putting a whole array of fruits and, and ceramic figures. There are wheels on yes. the bottom of the piece, yes. so it could in fact be moved on the tabletop. The craftsmanship featured original bronze cast Athenians, and the surface was applied by fire gilding. This remarkable piece was actually made in the 1820s in Paris. Considering its breathtaking craftsmanship, what would its value be? We would give this an auction estimate of fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Oh my God! I'll have to call her before that and tell her she's rich. <laughs> an avid Elvis Presley fan brought in his standee to the show. The standee was found in her friend's attic and given to her, knowing her love for Elvis. Elvis Presley was an iconic American singer and actor. His acting debut was in the 1956 musical film Love Me Tender. The film was supposed to be called The Reno Brothers, which were the title characters, but his hit single, Love Me Tender, had already sold a million copies, so the, the song was so popular at this point, they actually retitled the film. The standee was originally made to decorate the lobbies of movie theaters. The standee's appearance vividly indicated how long it had been. There are only about two or three of these known to exist. <laughs> really? This rare standee valued at ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Absolutely. You're kidding. No. I've never seen one before. I've only ever seen pictures. So you, you made my day. I'm glad. <laughs> and of all people with Elvis, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. An interesting story from the culinary world was shared by the guest. Well, my mother is involved with the food industry uh -huh. and has attended a few auctions uh, throughout her professional career. Sure. One memorable auction involved Julia Child, who served as an honorary chairwoman. Julia Child donated these pans to support aspiring chefs. She was a renowned American chef, author, and television personality who played a pivotal role in introducing French cuisine to the public. Her significant impact on cooking and pop culture is remarkable. She wasn't the first TV cook, but she really connected with so many viewers out there. Pans, used by Julia herself, carry historical weight. Julia Child once said, that her first French meal was an opening up of the soul and the spirit, and she really communicated that. The guest mother acquired these pans for $3,300. Would it double in price? Wow. So I think an auction value today would be about in the same range as what your mother paid, right around $3,500. This pair of pieces, brought by his wife's grandmother's cousin, was presented on the show. These pieces are known as Buddhistic lions and hold a distinctive significance. They were put on either side of a doorway and they were protectors to keep evil spirits out of the household. It was created in sets with a male adorned with a ball while the female cradles a pup. And the mother represents the maternal instinct and the dad is the protective instinct. The vibrant blue glaze on the lions, tracing its roots to the 17th century Kangxi period. 
The distinction between the early era, specifically the 17th century, and the circa 1900 version is in the glaze type. The bright blue color is referred to as the glaze. The earlier one has a more pronounced crackly appearance. I believe these to be late 19th century, 1880, 1890, somewhere in that time frame. These lions are both impressive and exceptionally well preserved. How much would their value be? At auction, they would make somewhere between $6,000 and $9,000 today. Very nice. All right. Hailing from Brunswick, Georgia, this guest was immersed in the rich history of the South. This cherished, iconic book titled Gone with the Wind held a special place to her. I got the book from a bookstore in South Florida. Mm -hmm. My husband offered to give it to me as a gift. This book is one of the greatest books written on the South. The masterpiece revealed the story of its writer, Margaret Mitchell, after a car accident in 1935. She was fortunate to submit it to Macmillan. The publisher was looking for new fiction, and the editor loved it. She spent the next two or three years researching and revising. This signed copy adds to the reality of the book. She hated signing. So if you see this, this is a rare signature. With a publication date of May 1936, the guest owned one of the first editions. To this day, Gone with the Wind is one of the best-loved books. It's been estimated sold over 30 million copies. Despite a missing piece on the dust jacket and some soiling, the value of this book was... Today, you would put an auction estimate of $3,000 to $5,000. Oh, wonderful. That's great. The guest unravels the origins of a cherished painting passed down through generations. Her great aunt was a science teacher at Brooklyn Polytech High in the 1920s. And at the same time that she was teaching science, Jane Peterson, who is the artist, was the director of drawing for the Brooklyn Public Schools. The bond led to summer painting sessions in Gloucester, the very site immortalized in the artwork. She acquired this painting from Jane, and it has been in our family for about the last 80 years. Jane Peterson was an Impressionist and Expressionist painter born in 1876. She came to New York to study at Pratt Institute in 1895 and graduated in 1901 and managed to save up enough money to go study in Europe, which was what every American artist wanted to do at that time. The painting is a vibrant post-Impressionist masterpiece painted by her. Peterson was quite a respected painter. And she really was quite respected and revered. She was honored by Time magazine, and she really got a lot of honors and recognition in her lifetime. She painted prolifically, with this Gloucester scene standing out among her cherished works. She tends to use these very bright colors and a lot of vibrant brushwork, kind of post-impressionist. It was referred to as a watercolor, and it's actually gouache, which is a water-based ah. paint, but it's very opaque. This cherished painting's value is estimated at $50,000. Thank goodness you saved it. <laughs> A treasure in a hidden dusty box was almost discarded. This is a collection of Playboy magazines that once belonged to this lady's grandfather. Out in the open, they didn't have any problems with it. It was just when it came time for them to move or yeah. when she wanted to clean the house, she'd want to throw them out. Right. Despite their past debates, the family resisted letting go of this nostalgic collection. This was a first issue of Playboy magazine, founded by Hugh Hefner. The very first issue, which we have out here, had Marilyn Monroe on the cover. She was not actually the centerfold. They didn't call it the centerfold then. She was the sweetheart of the month, which obviously is a very quaint way to call it. Its publication not only housed iconic images, but also featured literary contributions from renowned writers. We have one of the first serializations of Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, one of the most important works of post-war literature. Playboy Bunny logo, now an emblematic symbol, made its debut in the second issue. The collection's value was... Set in this condition, I would estimate at auction that it would have an estimate of $2,500 to $3,500. Oh, my goodness. The guest brought a ship painting and a model of her ancestor who used to be a captain of A.G. Jewett's Belfast ship. 
They built the ship outside of Belfast, Maine, a little town called Addison. It was what they consider a brig. Yes. Port painters were involved whenever American ships embarked on the creation of this painting. And there was also an artist by the name of Pellegrin who also did these port paintings in watercolor in Marseille at that period. The appraiser disclosed that Mr. Jewett was a prosperous individual and a lawyer. He had actually been an ambassador under President Polk in 1843 to 1845 to Peru. After the vessel sank, it was found in Cuba carrying sugar, machinery, and coal. When it hit, it hit a storm, <laughs> the ship started to rock and the machinery uh, let go yep. and rocked to one side, sure. and that was the end of, of, of the, the vessel. Jewett. Yes. How much would its value be? I think at auction, they would bring between ten dollars and $12,000 for the two of them. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, that, no, I'm being very serious. Wow. Yes. Well, they definitely will stay together well, and, and go down to the next generation. The guest grandmother was a devoted collector, and these items were found in an old trunk. These items are related to the Indianapolis 500, the world's greatest auto race. It's held every Memorial Day weekend, the Sunday, and it's been held since 1911. The earliest photographs, programs, and postcards unveiled the stories of race car legends. Ralph De Palma overcame a breakdown in 1912 to drive his Mercedes across the finish line. So that might detour a lot of drivers, but he came back in 1915 and he won it. Another car legend was Tommy Milton, who only had one functioning eye. And yet he was Indianapolis winner in 1921 and 1923. Unfortunately, Jimmy Murphy faced a tragic fate in the race. In 1924, he died in a dirt track race up in Syracuse, New York. While Joe Boyer overcame the challenges of the race and still secured victory. Joe Boyer, who is on the postcards on your side and on my side, had to share his victory. He had a relief driver come in for him who crashed on lap 109. And then he took over another car and finished the race and ended up being a co-winner. The photos are valued at $100 to $150 each. The postcards fetch around $150. Joe Boyer, who is on the postcards on your side and on my side, had to share his victory. And programs, particularly the rare 1915 edition, are estimated at $500 to $750. The overall value of these cherished items was... So you add all of this up, and I would put an auction estimate of $5,000 to $7,000. Ah, really? A small globe that had traversed continents was brought to the show. It once belonged to this guest great-grandmother who found its way to the United States in the 1800s. This piece was crafted in the German town of Nuremberg. And the maker of this was, was actually a gentleman by the name of Klinger who originated this group, but you'll see on the bottom it's marked C. Abel Klinger. Carl Abel acquired a business that had been started by Mr. Klinger in the 18th century. And, and Carl Abel ran the business as C. Abel Klinger to keep the legacy of the founder and continue on. The estimated value of this piece is... At auction today, I would estimate it between $2,000 and $2,500. <laughs> This guest brought in a cherished instrument that once belonged to her grandfather from the early 20th century. The heirloom's history unfolded as the appraiser revealed some information about the instrument. It's made in the town of Mark Neukirch in Germany and by a good firm, mass produced but a very high end mass production. The guest thought that the bow is often more valuable than the violin. And in fact, the bow in this case is essentially worthless. <laughs> Even though it's got this very fancy looking bone frog and this, all these wonderful stripes here, this is what we call imitation snake wood. It is possibly crafted by the esteemed Ernst Heinrich Roth Company. The instrument was adorned with the intricate details and a beautiful carved head. The cherished violin, valued at a surprising $3,500 to $4,000. You look stunned. I am. <laughs> I am. Um... And you thought this was better than that. Uh, it's just Grandpa's violin. I, my mother would be proud. The items you see here are Tennessee River pearl jewelry. The owner bought some for $2.50 in the 50s and... 
It's been handed down. Some of them came from my grandmother and my mother, and then some have been given to me through the years. These tiny pearls are very rare to find, as the Tennessee Authority have built a dam around the river. The piece can grow, and the larger they grow, the more expensive they become. The large piece looks rough, but it has a nice color, and it's beautiful. This one is pink. It's a special piece to the owner. The collection of the whole pearls brought by the guest is worth $6,500 at auction. The depth of art cannot be fathomed, and this rusty Erlen oil painting is proof of that. The nature-inspired painting was made by Magnus Kolkord in 1964. Magnus was a Swedish-American artist known for his depiction of Alaskan landscapes. He made several oil paintings which sold for thousands of dollars at auction. The owner of the piece got it from his parent as a gift. The painting captures the mystique and frontier of Alaska. The art takes a close capture of the northern Alaska light. Erlen made use of blue palette to describe the snowy nature of Alaska, the musher, and northern lights. Beyond the outlook, the painting also captured quietness and serenity. The painting also bears the middle name of the painter. It's not surprising that this great piece of art is worth forty to sixty thousand dollars at auction. Wow, I was not expecting that. <laughs> Letters and telegrams carry any interesting features to note about them. Let's find out with this letter and telegram sent by Amelia Earhart to the guest aunt. Amelia Earhart was an influential woman who lived between 1897 to 1937. She was an American aviation pioneer, writer, and journalist. Her write-ups and manuscripts are highly valued, and as claimed by the guest, she's a great friend to her aunt. Here is a telegram sent to the guest aunt, showing Amelia's picture as the maid of honor. This was written in Hearst International Cosmopolitan magazine, and it shows her role as a journalist. Many of her letters showed her entrepreneurial interest in promoting aviation during her time. Amelia is a very important person in American women and aviation history. How much do you think that this collection is worth? I would value the collection with an auction estimate of $12,000 to $18,000. Excellent. How interesting and fun it is to know about household items like this crock. It's a household item that was used for storing food items, water, and chemicals before refrigerators were invented. Crock is made from clay, and one as big as this would take two men for its production. This particular crock was made with a stencil in western Pennsylvania in the late 19th century. It's a 10-gallon crock, and it was purchased by Mr. Chappelle, a retailer from Cadiz in Kentucky. It's considered an original one because it's a Kentucky retailer's crock, how much do you think this item is worth at auction? So a good auction value of this would be around $2,000. What? I'm not going to say, oh, wow, <laughs> but oh, wow. Wow, really? Yeah. The owner of these beautiful paintings has been with them for about 40 years. What you see here are works of Clementine Hunter, a self-taught black folk artist. The artist is the first African-American female artist to have a solo exhibition at New Orleans Museum Art. This piece of art is a depiction of a nativity scene, and it alludes to the iconic birth of Jesus. There is a depiction of the manger where Jesus was born, the wise men bearing gifts, and the angels hovering around the manger to indicate God's presence. Clementine attached realistic details to her painting. One could see the angels' hairs flying as the angels moved around in the air. Apart from the baby Jesus painting, she also depicted a Saturday night party. The paintings depict her skill as a folk artist, and on them is her special signature, which makes her works unique to her alone. The paintings were bought for $800, but are now worth up to $5,000 at auction. That's so, great. That's amazing. That's wonderful. The guest had hung this sampler in her home for a long time, and she didn't know that there were letters hidden behind them. The sampler had been passed down from her grandmother to her. The letters found at the back of the sampler were hidden as a treasure. The sampler is beautifully embroidered. It's large and has a detailed graphic describing a house with animals and the steps leading to the front door of the house. It's a great property, and it can be insured for $5,000. 
These are memorable graphic works. They are World War II posters. The owner got them as a gift from a man from the military. It's interesting to know that World War II posters were printed as propaganda. They were printed in large numbers to influence different nations. These four were singled out of the 70 brought in by the guest. One was for the British, while three were American. Two of the American posters were signed by two artists. One was signed by Jean Carlu, a French artist and a graphic designer with one arm. The other was signed by Norman Rockwell, an American painter and illustrator. The last American poster depicts a scary image of a dagger driven through a Bible. It was designed to promote hostility against the enemy. The British poster bears a quote from Winston Churchill about the Royal Air Force. These historic collections are worth between $5,500 to $7,750 in value. Wow. It's a nice wedding gift. What more can excite an adult after a busy day than an exciting doll like this 120-year-old automation made by Leopold Lambert? Leopold was a French automaton maker who made and sold musical gaming machines and toys. This old piece brought for appraisal belonged to the guest grandmother, and it was hidden in a dark cupboard before it was found. There is the letters SH and the number 1300. So in fact, that tells me that she was made by a company called Simon and Halbig. It has a velvet-covered box that contains clogs, and its musical movements makes it a good toy for entertainment. Turn the knob. This is an expensive piece that has different movements. Its head, hand, and tambourine can move. At auction, it's worth up to $1,800 to $2,000. Books are many, but few like this are worth keeping. This is Das Work by Franz Masseril. The author of the book, Franz, was a painter and graphic designer known for his wordless novel which addresses political and social issues. This particular piece is the first edition of Franz's work. They are wordless novels full of woodcuts that tell stories that words cannot really express. Many of his works tell true life stories. This fantastic piece was bought for just $2. How much do you think it's worth at auction? Its value at retail would be $1,000 to $1,500. Wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Before the advent of refrigerators, this used to be a precious piece in the homes of wealthy people. This is a sarcophagus cellaret made between 1810 and 1840. It's an English sarcophagus cellaret, which was made as a dining piece for homes that could afford it. The design pattern of this piece is nicely laid, and it represents the age it was made. It has an ancient shape, with a spiral design around its cover, and a bobbin turning nulling in half circle and the lion's poor feet with a formalized lotus around it. These features suggest the idea that the beautiful piece was made in the 1820s. It's inlaid with lead and often used to keep drinks, spirits, and wines. Often ice is kept in it to keep drinks and wine cold, and the lead is installed to protect the piece from getting destroyed by the ice. The wood quality is timber, and it's such a great piece that it's worth 65,000 pounds at auction. Here's a musical piece worth examining. It's the work of George Gershwin, an American composer and pianist whose composition influenced jazz and classical genres. The title of this musical piece is Strike Up the Band, a popular piece that formed a part of satire on war and militaristic music. George collaborated with his senior brother, Ira Gershwin, to make this masterpiece. Sadly, the composition did not turn out great, but it was loved by many people. The piece has become one of American folklore. The lyrics of the piece were rewritten as a rally song for UCLA, the University of California, Los Angeles, and it formed a great song for their band. It has the signature of Ira and George on it. The owner was at the rally when the piece was donated to UCLA, so she got her copy signed by the composer. Guess the amount this musical gem is worth. Between $3,000 and $5,000. This German Santa Claus figure was made in the 1920s. The guest husband got it from his grandmother, and he took it home when he got married. The piece is made out of cotton batten, piping, and paper mache. 
it has lost a bit of value in that the color has faded. It should be in vibrant red. But due to exposure, it had lost a bit of its value, and instead of being valued at five to seven hundred dollars in its standard form, it's now worth fifty to seventy five dollars. This is a nineteenth century Martin CF guitar belonging to the guest father. Martin CF is an American company that deals with guitar production. It was established by Christian Frederick Martin. The company is highly respected for its acoustic guitars. The guitar here is called the CF Aught 28. It has a spruce front, a rosewood side, and back with inlay. It's called the parlor guitar, and it's a great instrument that ladies love to play with in the band. This unique piece at insurance is valued at you know, at least three to five thousand dollars. Wow. This is from Tiffany Studios. It's a paperweight glass. It's a product of Louis Tiffany, a glass collection and production company. Louis Tiffany had made a watercolor painting and requested that it should be made into glass. The painting is what turns out to be this great exhibition piece, the Morning Glory Paperweight Glass. It's one of the beautiful pieces Tiffany glass collectors love to have. The piece is worth between $50,000 and $75,000 at auction. No way! Oh my gosh, I was... It's nice to have this beauty here. It's a special trunk. It's an Iranian trunk, or let's say chest. It was made in Shiraz. These type of chests are built to be placed on dows, a type of sailboat that was used in the Persian Gulf for many centuries. The sole purpose of this chest is to serve as a storage container. One would expect that this should have faded out due to its age, but it's still in good shape, and it can be displayed in a gallery or showroom. It was valued for an amount between... Or $2,500 to $3,500. Wow. <laughs> 